uh, at Hall Glen and the pupils from Tamford Hill, there was always a wee bit of argy bargy, so uh, I'm a bit nervous about this tonight. It was like enemy therapy for me. Uh, I want to tell you about a really interesting conversation that I had uh, last week. I was touring a show up in the Highlands and a couple came along to the show who I hadn't seen for a few years uh, and it was good to see them. We went for a drink afterwards, catching up. And it turned into quite a late one. So I decided to take a punt and I was like, right, okay, cards on the table. How are we all voting? And there was a bit of nervous shifting, you know, because we've probably all had that experience, you know, the, the issue of the referendum comes up and you're like, oh, you know, how's, how's this going to go? And I said, look, we're all adults, you know, I, I'm perfectly capable of talking about this without falling out with anybody. So they relaxed a bit and they said, well, we're voting no. And I said, right, okay. I said, would you mind telling me your reasons? And they said, well, we're British. And I was like, well, legally, yes. But why is that a reason? And they said, well, you know, they, they both come from England, as it happens. We're, we've been really welcomed in Scotland. We love it here. Our family's here. Our jobs are here. But we feel like we'd be letting down everybody in the rest of the UK, all our friends and family down south, by voting for separation. And I was like, so this is an emotional argument for you. And they're like, well, yeah. And I was like, well, it's difficult for me to argue against that. But I tried, you know, and I, and I gave them the pitch. And at the end of it, they said, well, you know, you're very convincing. And uh, I said, well, great, will you vote yes? And they said, no, I'm not going to do that. But if Scotland votes yes, we'll be getting involved. See, that's it. That's a story. <laughs> they know I'm here, they, they smell the whole world. <laughs> they said, if Scotland votes yes, we think it could be quite exciting. And we'll get involved and we'll take part in it and we'll be trying to make the country better. Now that to me was great news. Here we had a couple of very firm no voters who were saying that a yes vote could be exciting. That even they, who feel like they would be letting down their friends and family in the rest of the UK, could sense the possibilities in it. And another thing they said was, they thought the way their own campaign had been run was dismal. And that was the word they used. Two no voters said, we think the campaign's been dismal. And I was like, well, why do you think that is? They've not got a lot to sell. Because essentially, what better together represent are a list of reasons that Scotland will fail if it becomes independent. A list of things that we can't do. A list of cataclysms that will befall us if we vote yes. Because I don't know if you've ever examined a better together speech, right? But here's how it starts. I'm proud to be Scottish, hmm. right? They spend their whole time railing against nationalism and then bang on about how proud they are to be Scottish. You never actually hear anybody in the Yes campaign talking about how proud they are to be Scottish because A, it's self-evident and B, it's irrelevant. This is actually about changing policy, changing constitution and changing where power resides. I'm proud to be Scottish. Great. Okay, and we are not denying that Scotland could be an independent country. Scotland has got everything that will make a country successful. But here's all the reasons why it won't work. <laughs> now they've got to say, we think Scotland could be independent. Scotland could make a success of it. First of all, because it's true. And secondly, because they know that saying... There's no way Scotland can be independent. That's ridiculous as a vote loser. So they've got to put that at the start of their speech. But then they'll spend half an hour telling you all the reasons why Scotland can't be independent. Why Scotland won't be able to make a success of it. Because what it comes down to is, they don't really believe in the Scottish people. Now they'll never say, you're too wee, you're too poor, you're too stupid. But that is underlying everything that they suggest. Pensions! Pensions will be a disaster. Here's why pensions won't work. There's a black hole where your pensions will be. So essentially what they're saying is, only Whitehall can organise a pension. Scotland's the only country in the world that is unable to run a pension scheme. Now, I don't know why they believe that, but that is essentially what they're saying is. 
So I said to this uh, couple that I was speaking to, I was like, look, you said it yourself, you live here, you've made your home here, you feel welcomed here, you've settled down here. Don't you want what's best for the people who live here, including yourselves, including your family that you're raising here? And they could sort of see the sense in what I was saying, ah, but, ah, but. I was like, try and imagine what it's going to be like. The day after Scotland votes, yes. The excitement that will be generated. It'll be like a Scotland game plus hug my knee. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, times a million. It's going to be incredible. And it will carry on like that. Because if 51% of the people in this country, even if only 51% of the people in this country vote yes, that's the majority of people in this country who want change, whose eyes are open. Because the lights are going on all over this country. What's been said tonight is true. I'm doing talks like this about two or three times a week all over Scotland. The village halls, church halls, community centres, school assemblies, pubs that are full of people. Hungry for ideas. Hungry for politics. Hungry for change. And when was the last time that happened? We turn up every four years, we tick a box and we go like that. And we just hope that whoever we've elected down there will somehow be benevolent. Let's hope that they remember we're here. That's essentially how we feel when we go out and vote. The first time I was ever eligible to vote was in 1997. A Labour government. I'd grown up knowing nothing but Thatcher and the Tories. It was a Labour government. It was like suddenly the sky had changed from blue to green. It's <coughs> inconceivable. A Labour government. All bets are off. What changed? The rich got richer. That's what changed. A million people in London marched against the Iraq war. I was one of them. One of the most exciting things I've ever felt in my life. A million people. We thought we're standing up to the government. We're telling them that this will not do. And what happened? We went ahead anyway. Tens of thousands of people dead. Tens of billions of pounds squandered. Ten years later, it's still a mess. So that never happened. Protest never worked. Voting in Labour never worked. We've got another chance. The Lib Dems. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for them at the last election. I thought in all conscience I can't vote Labour. It needs to be the Lib Dems. And Clegg talks such a good game. Such a good game. And the run up to that election. It was bending Brown and Cameron to his will. They were falling over themselves to please him. <coughs> so here we go. Well, there's a chance of a left-wing government in Westminster. We've got to take it. What do we get? The usual crap. Lib Dems <laughs> brought up a Tory government. So we've tried Labour. We've tried Lib Dems. And what do we get? The same. Even the Labour government that we voted for, that we democratically got, had recalibrated themselves to appeal to Tory voters because there are certain few swing constituencies in the southeast of England because the democratic system that Westminster runs doesn't work. We had the chance to change that. They voted against it. So we're stuck with first past the post. That democracy that continually fails us. So when I hear Better Together saying, no, what we've got to do is reform the system, how? We've tried everything. We've tried it your way. We've tried it your way for 300 years. Ah, but the British state introduced the NHS, the welfare state, council housing. <coughs> True. And if that was the Britain we were living in now, I would be thinking twice about voting yes. I'd be seriously considering an oval. But that's gone. It's been tipped over. Thatcher realised actually that the gap between the rich and the poor in this country was narrowing. All we hear is how terrible the 1970s were. Oh, there was uh, bin bags in the street. Trade union militants say they were wrecking the country. The gap between rich and poor in the UK has never been narrower than in the 1970s. And that's why Thatcher had to happen. Because they realised that we were closing the gap on them. So they had to kick it over. Wreck the post-war <coughs> consensus. A post-war post -war consensus, by the way, which only came into being because of the trauma of the Second World War. Now, we didn't need another world war to kickstart 
a benevolent socialist UK. Nobody wants that. <coughs> what we can do is provide the shock to the system that Scottish independence will provide. Because it will radically transform politics right across the UK. People who have been told that they're propping us up, it's not their fault they think that, that's what their media class are telling them. They're propping up Scotland. Our subsidies are going towards helping Scotland stay on life support. And they see us thriving. They see us saving money in defence. They see us redistributing the wealth. They see us going back to council housing to solve a housing crisis which is looming larger and larger. I don't know uh, if any of you are on the waiting list for a council house, but good luck to you. They'll see us reinvesting <coughs> in our people. They'll see us investing in a green energy programme, reindustrialising Scotland, exporting the green energy, exporting the technology. There's a plan. And they'll see us making a success and they'll want it. They'll say if Scotland can do it, we can do it. And they'll demand better for their politicians. If we vote no, it's not going to help the left. The right will just claim it. They'll take that as a vote of confidence for the way things are. And as has been pointed out, they can do what the hell they like to us. We'll take that off you, we'll take that off you, we'll take that off you. You can't do that, how no? That's what you voted for. You voted to be part of this setup. You voted to be British. Well, you're still British. So we're taking all that. The reality of the UK state, it's a mechanism for funneling money from the people up towards the elites. That's what it is. That's what it will continue to be unless we stop it. We can make a better country, and we will. Thank you.